Which you guys got another video. This mini PC does it all. It's the B Link SEI 13 Pro. This has an i9 13900HK processor in it, which is a pretty powerful processor by today's standards, especially when you pair it with a mini PC. So inside the box, you're going to get yourself a user manual. This is going to give you all the information you need how to set this up. It gives you a HDMI cable to get you up and running, but you can add your own cables if you want. And you also have your power cable, which is for the UK, but they've got ones for other countries as well. Barrel jack here and also Huntkey uh, power adapter here for the actual unit to power it. So pretty decent little setup here for the price. It's a $539 uh, for this particular unit. So on the front we do have, we have a power button, a clear CMOS right next to it and also 3.5 millimeter audio jack port there and a USB-C 10 Gbps data only port and a type A USB 3.2 10 Gbps and the four little holes there are the microphone array uh, for the front of the device on the side it's blank there's no ports there and the same on this side as well we have nothing on this side on the back we do have that expansion area at the very top on the left hand side we have two USB 3.2 10 Gbps uh, ports there, one 2.5 gigabit Ethernet LAN port, and another two USB 2.0 480 Mbps. And also we have 3.5 millimeter audio jack there. Also, we have a HDMI port, which is 4K at 60 Hertz, a USB-C 10 Gbps port, which is data and video, and a DC in port there as well. So that's what you have on the back of the unit. So we have two 3.5 millimeter audio jacks, one on the front, one on the rear, and those microphone uh, ports on the front, they are for voice interaction and 360 degrees on the direction pickup. So you can pick up audio quite well. On the bottom, it's made of plastic here. Inside the actual unit, you can see these are the speakers. These dual speakers are enhanced by DSP and professional amplifier to deliver a full bodied sound. So quite a nice uh, touch to add these in there as well so these little rubber feet here you do have to pull these off they are basically glued on so you will have to pull them off to gain access now i'm just going to quickly remove this outer cage here so i'll quickly remove these two screws to remove this mesh here which is going to allow heat dissipation here which is quite nice so you can use dual m.2 2280 pci express 4.0 maximum for eight terabytes so that will be two four terabyte drives you can put in here which is going to be plenty of storage and capacity inside this uh, particular mini pc so what we need to do here is i'm just going to quickly lift this up by putting the screwdriver underneath here should have probably used a spudger here but it's okay so let's just move this up so we can gain access to inside and once we've got this open You'll see inside here, there's a little ribbon, so you've got to be a bit careful. Now, I'm not going to remove the heatsink, but that's where the M.2 drives are. You've got one of them in there, which is one terabytes, but this can be upgraded to four terabytes in each slot. So you'd have a total of eight terabytes underneath here. The memory is 32 gigabytes of RAM in this one, which is LPDDR5. And this is 6000 megahertz speed and a dual channel, as you would see. And also we have Wi-Fi 6 Intel AX200 uh, Wi-Fi card in there and Bluetooth 5.2 on there as well. This does have a MSC 2.0 cooling system on here, so should have decent cooling. So the Intel i9 13900HK processor, it also has 13 cores and 20 threads. Maximum turbo frequency is 5.4 gigahertz with a 24 megabyte Intel Smart cache on this one as well. Now, this also has 65 watts of TDP. So let's do some benchmarks on it. So let's quickly run CPU Z here. This will give you an idea of what the actual chip is. And I'm also going to run a benchmark on here. So idle temperatures are 44 Celsius on this particular CPU, which is pretty good idle. So we've got the CPU core max there and also the CPU package and the uh, TJ Max there as well and the thermal throttling and stuff like that. So you can take a look at that when I run the benchmark and that should give you some idea of what we've got. So you can see the motherboard and the memory, which we've already gone through here. 
and I'm just going to go through and just show you this right here so you can see all of the specifications. The GPU on this one has the Intel Iris Xe graphics on it, which is pretty nice. So I'll quickly start the uh, torturing test here on the CPU and you can see it jumps right up immediately here. So I'm expecting this to be pretty good on cooling. I can already see the package ring power limit has exceeded. That says yes. And also the core power limit has exceeded there as well. Now it's not thermal throttling or anything like that. The TJ Max is not really hot as well. So that's a good sign. We're not getting any red figures pointing up on here. So everything seems to be running perfectly fine. So just coming down here for the CPU package at 72 Celsius, which is pretty good running nice and cool uh, for this particular mini PC. And I'm just looking at the package power here, 53 watts. The NVMe drive in this one is a Crucial P3 Plus 4.0 NVMe. So pretty decent NVMe drive they've slotted in there. Only a one terabyte. But you can always upgrade this if you want to to a four terabyte and there's another one there as well for another four terabytes the reads for this is 4984.65 and the writes is 4680.34 for the reads and writes on that drive so not too shabby for a drive like that for a mini pc let's move on to the jellyfish 400 mbps uh, 4k ultra hd HEVC 10 bit file, and we'll just quickly run this and see if it plays on Media Player. So, just letting this load up, it is running. So, it's taking a bit of a time to start this file up, and I normally test this on VLC, but I wanted to try Media Player, and it is playing as you can see, and it is silky smooth. There is no stuttering or jerkiness there. And I'll quickly stop and start this and drag it along to see how long it takes to start up, and it starts up pretty fast. So, Pretty good playback for that particular file format. This will be great for a Plex server or something like that with an Intel processor in there as well. This is Geekbench 6 for the CPU. Single core score is 2074. Multi-core score is 7132. I'll do the GPU test as well on there. That's 12,946 for the Geekbench 6 GPU uh, benchmark. So not too bad. Let's do a 4K playback here. And I'm just quickly playing this. And you can see there was a, a couple of drop frames there to start off with, but it does stabilize. You get the odd one or two drop frames here and there, but really you're not noticing it on the screen. It is silky smooth playback, so it's going to be great for Plex. BIOS seems to be unlocked, which means you can do some tweaking inside the BIOS. If you need to go in here and turn some things off and turn some things on, you can do inside the BIOS. So I went right through here and had a quick look here. So plenty of settings which are unlocked and it's unusual because a lot of mini PCs normally have this pretty much locked down. Let's take a look at the Time Spy score, 1263 for 3D Mark Time Spy, pretty decent score. And I'll also do the uh, Night Raid GPU, onboard GPU uh, test as well so you can see that. And that is 11,355 and that's for onboard graphics uh, test as well. So pretty nice score there. So this system should be able to handle some games. If you turn the settings down, you should be able to play some games. So Cinebench R23, you can see the CPU multi-core score was 14,830 points and the CPU single core score is 1,696 points. So pretty decent score from Cinebench. And this is all inside a mini PC. Now, again, if you wanted to play some retro gaming you can do it plays all your retro games it can play some AAA listed games as well maybe at lower resolutions you might be able to get away with some 1080p and some 720p games on there if depending on the type of game you're playing and what sort of settings you're playing it at but 1080p should be perfectly fine for a lot of the games settings and resolution permitted depending what you're running there but all in all, a really nice little mini PC. Now, people always talk about whether it's worth buying a mini PC. And I think when mini PCs have come on leaps and bounds, I've reviewed loads of mini PCs. And I always see people in the comments section talking about how expensive they are and uh, why would you need one? Well, literally, this will replace your aging Windows 10 computer that is not compatible with Windows 11 anymore. This comes with Windows 11 Pro straight out the box. And it's 500 bucks and it will outperform your aging desktop 
no problem at all. And I've proved that in previous videos on a $300 or $270 budget mini PC, which will outperform i7, 77 and HQ processors. It's ridiculous how much performance you're getting on these mini PCs. So if you are in that predicament and you've got an old computer and you're looking for something new and you don't want to spend a lot of money, then something like this will be perfect. If you want to play a few games, surf the web, uh, do some video editing, this sort of CPU can handle video editing as well. So all in all, a pretty decent system. I'll leave all the links and information in the video description. B-Link did send this out for review. Uh, all my opinions are my own. No one is reviewing this video before it's released and no money has changed hands for this review. My name has been Brian from browtechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to say a quick shout out to all my YouTube members. I appreciate the support and I shall catch you in the next video or I'll see you on the Discord server. The link is in the video description. Bye for now.